So, Peter, thank you so much for joining joining me today. This is I, I have been following what you've been doing ever since you started with such uh, in, uh, excitement, and I'm very impressed with what you've done. But thank I'd you. like to sort of get back, just start off with the basics, yeah. which is, uh, you know, the, the, how Northrop got started, but then also an explanation of what a battery cell is and how how, in a sense, how it's made and how you've develop the technology you use because yeah. it's it, you know from from what i've understood yeah you've made some really critical choices really early on in the process it's sort mm. of a fresh start in a way yeah no uh, so so um so to go back to to uh, the starting point uh, you know obviously i had uh, the fortune of uh, of spending a, a number of years uh, uh, in in california with with the growth of tesla seeing um, basically, seeing at least uh, uh, what uh, what I thought uh, the, the the industry was going, and and um, I stepped out um, end of, of 2015 after the launch of, of the the Model X, and we kind of set uh, uh, the stage for for the Gigafactory at that point point of time, as we recognized uh, that. Uh, um, the scale up of the auto industry would uh, uh, would require a totally different type of, of manufacturing scale for for, for batteries. Uh, it wasn't really my my intention to to go start Northvolt uh, uh, at at that point of, of uh, time. I've started to engage in startups in Silicon Valley, joined some boards, and uh, uh, you know had a happy wife for a while. But then I, I you know I I realized that. You know, it's much more fun to do something on your own than to to sit and give advice uh, to people. And and we started to look. Uh, uh, I was still living in, in in Palo Alto and started to look at Europe. Um, you know, maybe the region that has the highest commitment uh, uh, to the Paris Treaty, uh, pretty much requiring um, Europe to reduce its carbon footprint with almost 80 percent over uh, 30 years. And in order to do that, you, you, you know, the only realistic choices is, is to take oil out of transportation and, and, and really redefine the way that you do power generation, uh, replacing coal, uh, oil, natural gas with, with wind, solar, uh, renewable sources. And all of this just requiring a massive amount of, of energy storage and where batteries is going to be playing a, a key role. And, and on the supply side, seeing that, that Europe had an almost non-existing uh, supply chain, um, yeah. you know, um, Varta um, and, and, uh, and Saft being uh, European players, but, but in the big scale of, of things, they were really niche, uh, uh, niche players. So that was the assumption we started. And, and uh, uh, the more we looked into the case of, of building large scale and also looking at, at the vertical integration of, of including active material making into to the mix, we, we recognize a, a couple of things. One was that uh, um, the location and, and the availability of energy uh, became a, a really, really key enabler for, for uh for that uh, that scale production um, and and uh, you know where where it's specifically the Nordics, Finland, Sweden, uh, Norway, and 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 Iceland, uh, you know, have a, an energy surplus uh, specifically on on renewable. So that was a that was a, an important insight. The other important insight is is that if you look at the, uh, the, uh, the the value chain uh, of, of of building batteries it's it's uh, that value chain is also creating a pretty significant carbon footprint uh, you know uh, pulling out the, the raw materials the uh, uh, the nickel the cobalt the manganese uh, not at least uh, the, the graphite and and uh, uh, and, and then processing it uh, into active material and then building batteries is consuming a lot of energy, almost like uh, uh, if you build a one kilowatt hour of, of battery cell, you consume somewhere uh, 80 to 100 times the amount of energy in, in that process, which means wow. that if you if we're driving this transformation and, the, and and we're seeing this this is enormous growth of of the battery industry and 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 this transformation happens uh, you know driven out of china for example 
where where uh, where we have a carbon-based grid. You know, obviously China have ambitions to change, but at this point of time, it is a coal-based uh, uh, grid. Coal. Yeah. You know, uh, and we would uh, and we think that the whole car industry is going to uh, transform into electric. We are basically creating a new carbon footprint uh, the size of half Germany's. Uh, uh, right. in, uh, in in building this industry if we don't do it uh, the right thing so not only did we uh, did we see that uh, that we actually could could build scale battery manufacturing at, at uh, a very very uh, cost uh, efficient way uh, if we did it the, the right way but we also saw that we could drive the transformation uh, into a way where where we are also not creating a new problem uh, when we are are doing that and and th those became kind of you know the core of the mission and and why we created uh, Northvolt. So if you say that the entire manufacturing process of the battery, so not maybe not the refinement of the materials, but certainly not the kind of extraction, transportation and, and refinement, but the actual manufacturing is that a fairly large percentage? of the overall energy use to produce the batteries. Is that, it, is that, it, is that it, a major it, bit? It, it is, uh, uh, you, know, speci you know, specifically around uh, um, uh, producing the active, uh, the active materials uh, in, in the way that you mix and process a, a cathode material, uh, you, you, are, uh, you are processing it uh, several times in what's called precursor and calcination processes under extremely high heat. Uh, in order to uh, to get uh, to the properties uh, that that you would uh, would like um, uh, out of it, and and that drives a, a lot of energy. In the same way, if you look at at uh, the anode material that is is driven uh, out of uh, graphite today, um, you know that graphitization process is is uh, also uh, immensely energy intensive. And then, uh, um, then you take these materials, you mix them into two separate slurries, and, and you coat them on, on two different uh, uh, foils. That coating process is also, uh, uh, is also having lo long ovens in order to, to take the, the wet chemistry and, and, and dry it, because uh, you know, uh, if you don't get the moisture out, uh, moisture out you... Uh, uh, your, your lithium will react uh, as it's uh, uh, moisture sensitive. So, so um, those uh, ovens is also consuming a, a lot of energy. And then you go into to an assembly process, uh, you, you assemble it, and then uh, after the assembly, you actually activate the cell in what's called the formation process, where you, you know, kind of cycle the, uh, the battery in, in several steps. And that is also um, uh, quite uh, an, an energy intensive uh, process. So if you combine it all, it, it's, um, it is using a, a lot of energy and, and I think we have uh, uh, managed to, uh, uh, to get this message out and we managed to get uh, uh, both uh, uh, stakeholders, uh, you know, the car industries and others to, to, to realize this and, and put it higher and higher on, on the agenda. But we're also seeing that the European Commission and, and, and others uh, really uh, have the ambition of, of uh, uh, supporting uh, to build an ecosystem in the right way here in, in Europe. Right. And I mean, is that, I'm assuming that was part of your motivation of, of where you located your, your first big factory. I'm assuming it's because it was close to a very reliable source of renewable energy. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, we, we made a wish list of, of, of things uh, um, that that, uh, that we thought was was, was critical. Uh, energy was one. I mean, actually, to have a, a, a fairly sizable uh, piece piece of land. I mean, it's a large factory, so so it's right. it's a two hundred hectare uh, ty type of land. Uh, we had the, the benefit of up there in the north having the uh, the raw materials and and uh, the logistics for both the skills as well as the logistics uh, next to our our plant uh, Boliden has a big uh, uh, both recycling and as well as a, a smelting hub so so yeah. uh, there was a number of things but maybe uh, besides the energy the most important thing was was we had a region that really really wanted us to come 
Wow. We had uh, uh, politicians, we had other types of stakeholders that were super agile to uh, to support us with uh, with uh, our needs, and um, that was yeah. also a critical factor. I can't imagine how much your user, you know, a factory like that uses. I think it's. I think we can. It's mm. For our, our many viewers, <laughs> except it's quite thick wires that go to that factory. <laughs> no, I, I mean, as, just to give a, a reference point, uh, you know, fully built out, uh, both the phase one and, and uh, what we're now looking at at the phase two, uh, we will consume close to two and a half percent of Sweden's uh, electricity generation. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, a, a couple of factories uh, uh, like this and then, uh, you know, what you also see as a big trend in Sweden, the, the ambition to uh, to transform some of the other industries like the steel industry and make uh, uh, steel carbon free, uh, yeah. you know, driving this transition, uh, we will pretty soon uh, have uh, consumed all the, the overage of uh, electricity that, uh, and hydropower that we have uh, in, in Sweden. But I think, I think we ought to also inform our viewers that it's actually very near the Arctic Circle where, you're, where yeah. this factory is. Yeah, so yeah. I have, it's only because I have been in that part of Sweden a few years ago. Mm. And as a southern or a mid-European yeah. We just don't know what that sort of cold is. It was minus 38 one day. Yeah, I, was, I mean, uh, as, as a, snow. It's you know, it's lovely, yeah. Yeah. As, as a reference <laughs> point, uh, you know, the, the golf season starts mid-June. Uh, uh, <laughs> but then... Uh, <laughs> but then, but uh, you could probably play golf 24, almost absolutely. 24 hours a day. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I've actually done that. I've teed off at well. one o'clock in the morning uh, uh, <laughs> one time. Uh, so, yeah. so it has its its its, its pros and, it's and, and cons. It, it's actually a really really lovely place. And and uh, what we've seen is is um, it is not that difficult uh, to get people to move there. Uh, right. Uh, it, yeah. it has fantastic nature. Uh, you know, if you have a young family, uh, uh, life quality is is, is really really uh, really good. good. The, the wow. challenge for us right now is to build uh, uh, housing uh, and and um, you know support yeah. uh, the incoming fast enough um, yeah. because all these have processes, you know, permitting and getting construction up and running. It takes a little bit time, and and right now we are. Uh, this is becoming a, a big bottleneck for us. Right now, we are doing all sorts of, of equipment installation. Uh, so the, the, the clean room, the, the, uh, the structure within the larger structure is, uh, is, is uh, done. And, and now the equipment is moving in. And during Q2 and, and, and Q3, we will do a lot of commissioning uh, feeding in all the feeder systems, etc., into uh, uh, into this setup, and, and in Q4 we'll focus on on uh, really starting system by uh, system by system. Right. So, so the, the the first block out of two, uh, we should uh, get out uh, a few cells before before New Year's Eve. Might right. be New oh, Year's Eve, good. but yeah. we are determined yeah. uh, <laughs> to do it before the end of the year. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a very special moment when you can hold up the first cell that comes off the production line. Uh, 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 absolutely, and uh, you know, so, we, it is it is funny because uh, uh, the piece of land, uh, it, it there is a height, a little bit. Uh, uh, it's like seven meters up, uh, a little bit outside, uh, where where we have a kind of a visiting point, and and uh, in in the local. The, the closest local village that is called Bergsbyn, uh, uh, there, uh, uh, there is a group of, of uh, uh, retirees that goes up there every, uh, uh, every day to watch the construction and they feedback right. us if they, you know, if they think that right. the construction workers are lazy, they would feedback us. And, <laughs> uh, and, and in the beginning, they, they call this hill uh, the hill of the doubters. Uh, and, uh, well, and 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 later on, it's uh, you know it's been uh, quite the visiting point because it's quite the sight. Yeah. Uh, you know, every yeah, time sure. I go yeah. up there, I get this this feeling in my in my stomach. It's like uh, holy, yeah. what I've what have I started? What, what have I done? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is amazing. But then, so then, uh, I think the other fascinating things that you're doing, and well, it's the it's the 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 longevity of batteries. I think that is a is a fascinating discussion for the general public who may, you know, we 
our experience, most people's experience with small electronics is yeah. the first thing that goes wrong is the battery. You know, maybe two or three years and the battery is no good and it doesn't last very long. And that's our experience of batteries. And then and when electric cars first appeared, I think no one really knew how long the systems would last because we'd never done it before. Yeah. Yeah. But we now know they do last. But but uh, and there's quite a lot in your design structure in the basic construction to increase longevity. Uh, uh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, the the designs of of uh, new batteries are. I mean, they are designed to um, to last at least ten years and and right. uh, and and can withstand significantly longer. And this this is. Another interesting thing uh, that is fascinating with this this industry is is that you know a battery is kind of a you know it's it's almost like a living organism that you know if you treat it well uh, in, in the way that you charge this charge and and, uh, uh, and and you know keep it at at the stable temperature uh, that battery can last for a long period of time but you can also uh, if you treat it wrong, you you can uh, you know you can lower the capacity very very fast, um, and 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 here we see uh, uh, what is key or a key enabler here going forward is what we call the connected battery, uh, the ability uh, to actually track the way a battery is being used in the field, and where we based on this data can uh, can also give. Um, customers information on on uh, you know behavior feedback you know your battery wow. will last significantly la uh, longer if if you do this and this if you plug in your yeah. uh, your car uh, every night instead of you're only charging once a week and and these kinds of things so so the fact yeah. that you can kind of enhance a product uh, um, and 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 use uh, uh, customer feedback to to do it uh, i think is something we're going to see here over the coming years, and and where, um, where 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 the software uh, becomes a, a key uh, enabler together with the battery and the the, the whole system, uh, and and this is something we're very very excited about. Because I mean, I think and the other really critical thing that I'm so impressed and excited that you're you're dealing with straight on is is recycling. You know, it is the it is the kind of, uh, you know, the criticism that you might get about electric cars from people who maybe don't know that much about them. You know, you're just going to throw the battery away after five years. Or I've got to, if I buy a second-hand electric car, I've got to buy a new battery, which we now know you clearly don't have to. But yeah. it's the fact that you've, it feels like you're building the recycling process into your kind of initial design of how you make and, and no, produce batteries. I, 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 absolutely. I mean, when we started here, uh, very, very early, we put aside a little group of, of, uh, of engineers to, to look at this. And, and it was primarily driven uh, out of, of that, you know, if we want the society to go all in, including politicians, etc., in this transformation, uh, you know, we also, we must show... Uh, that this is not just creating another pile of waste uh, 10, 15 yeah. uh, years down the road. And, and, and uh, you know, that, that we are kind of, uh, you know, consuming uh, a lot of critical uh, minerals uh, for, for one life cycle of, of, uh, of transformation. And, and pretty soon, uh, and the team, we have a, f a fabulous uh, uh, woman, uh, Emma Nierenheim, uh, in, in the team um, that, is, uh, that have led the development of uh, kind of a new process uh, of, for, for recycling where, you know, you, you, uh, you take a pack, uh, you discharge it, you dismantle it, um, and then, uh, uh, then you crush it. Um, into uh, a very thin uh, uh, black mass, and that's 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 similar for for uh, all processes. But what what then comes is instead of taking that blast, uh, black uh, mass and, and putting it into to a furnace and and and, and thereby through a pyrotechnology uh, separating. Uh, uh, nickel and uh, cobalt and some of the the more valuable, we're actually using uh, uh, 
uh, a hydrometallurgical uh, se separ separation uh, process. So we are chemically uh, dissolving uh, these, um, and and, uh, and and thereby we can not only separate the nickel, uh, cobalt, uh, manganese, but we can also actually catch lithium, which. Uh, in in a in the alternative process is is, is gone. You can't. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. too th uh, fickle. But but in in, uh, in the uh, hydrometallurgical process, uh, uh, you can actually uh, separate that too. Which means that we are looking at you know close to ninety percent or or you know potentially uh, even even higher recyclability of, of a battery, and 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 also because we are. You know, because we are producing our own active material with in in our factory, uh, we can really build a fully circular loop. And and right. uh, you know, there will be starting costs and investments in technology. But once at scale, uh, you know, I think this could be a paradigm shift where uh, today, uh, at the end of life, there is a there is a producer's cost. Uh, to take care yeah. of, uh, uh, of of a battery, and it's fairly expensive today. Uh, but where where this actually becomes uh, uh, you know a valuable commodity for uh, for the OEMs uh, at the end of life, and and uh, uh, where that battery actually can be uh, you know when we get it uh, and and we build a new battery out of it, uh, uh, then we can uh, give a, you know a significant discount on the new battery. In, in order right. to build a, a fully um, uh, cir circular flow, so this is something we yeah. we're very very excited. We built uh, the pilot plant in in Westeros. It's 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 working. Right. We are now sitting, designing a, a four gigawatt hour uh, setup up in uh, next to our factory in uh, in, in Skellefteå. and we're already uh, starting uh, to work both with OEMs. Um, in, a couple of days ago, we announced that we are doing a, a really kind of a, a life cycle validation uh, together with Volvo, uh, where where we're taking their batteries and show that we can build new batteries out of them. Uh, right. Uh, wow. And uh, uh, and also we've we've started a joint venture in in. Uh, uh, in Norway, uh, together with uh, uh, Norsk Hydro, which we call Hydrovolt, and and right. in this uh, this setup, uh, we we you know we we're trying to tap a market that had come the furthest in in terms of electrification, but but also you know uh, due to uh, failures, due to crashes uh, and and things that happen is is starting to to feedback. Uh, a fair amount of, of batteries yeah. uh, that we could start uh, playing around with in, in the recycling flow. Um, so, Peter, uh, you're making all these batteries. Once you're up and running in this factory and you're making all these batteries, what I know is you'll make some for cars, maybe some for uh, grid storage, some for trucks and buses. I mean, if you, what, what is the actual outlook for that, for, for where you're supplying batteries to? Uh, absolutely, and and um, you, you know, obviously, the, the, the largest part of this market is is for sure going to be uh, automotive, and uh, right. and 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 one, you know, an interesting trend we see there is is car makers really going from from looking at batteries as kind of a one format commodity uh, towards designing new vehicle platforms, uh, new electrical platforms, where where they look at kind of this skateboard as, as you know, how do we optimize the amount of energy we can get within within this framework? And, and that actually drives uh, that they're putting uh, requirements on, on, on unique uh, cell designs to, to optimize the platforms. But the platforms in themselves become so large, uh, you know, that they fill up uh, really the, the criteria for economies of scale. I mean, some of these plot, like, like when the Volkswagen designed a platform, that platform will drive several gigafactories uh, worth of, of, of demand. But then, um, then what you see is, is uh, uh, you know, I'm incredibly uh, excited about the, uh, the energy storage piece because I, I think mm. we've only seen the starting point of, uh, of this, which is, is uh, basically, I mean, the, the largest market right now is in the U.S. replacing uh, uh, you know, gas turbines uh, with with yeah, uh, uh, with pumps, energy yeah. storage uh, to to balance uh, the grid. But I do think when this, you know, just wave 
of, of electric cars comes out, uh, it, it's going to put the whole uh, kind of, of new load requirements on uh, on, on the grid, and yeah. and, uh, and 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 that you could solve by by two ways. One is you dig up uh, you know the world and and replace the current uh, small piping with large copper piping, or you balance by by you know having a, a much uh, a more even load, um, and, and and you bring in energy during the night, and then you know uh, store yeah. it with energy storage, and, and and then you charge the vehicles uh, in in yeah. during the days, uh, etc. So I think, I think this market is super exciting, and and we're uh, we're just building a really large factory uh, actually in Gdansk, Poland, to to drive. Um, uh, drive this. So this is something we're very excited about. But then comes all the other different industry verticals where you're basically replacing a combustion engine, whether yeah. it's a lawn yeah. mover, you know, whether it's an yeah. excavator, whether it's an underground mining equipment. I mean, everywhere you, where you see a Bricks and Stratton or a Cummings, uh, you know, eventually you will yeah. probably see an electrical powertrain. And and uh, and it will have a number of different effects. You know, all these machinery will be significantly, uh, you know, uh, higher energy uh, um, efficient. So they will consume less less, but they will also yeah. be more uh, more silent. Um, yes. And and one thing that I'm you know on my own is very excited about this. Uh, you know, we're building a factory up north, uh, snowmobiles. Um, yes, uh, you know, uh, fantastic little fun uh, um, yeah. and important for for uh, uh, for the people up up north, but incredibly yeah. noisy. Uh, yes, but and smelly because that's one one of the memories I have of being in that the most pristine forest I've ever seen, yeah. and the air kind of almost hurt my nose because it was so clean. And yes. then I got on the back of a snowmobile, and I was going, "Oh, fuck, it was yeah. smoke coming out of it, exactly. noisy." Yeah. So yeah. it, it, it'll be there, and we will see it in in uh, in cities. Uh, you know that will be significantly more silent. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, and, yeah. and uh, so so so, uh, so we're yeah. all uh, all uh, looking at all these 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 verticals. And and our challenge right now is is. Uh, um, uh, the, uh, our, our breadth of engineering um, and and uh, uh, because. Every company in these uh, different verticals is 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 having an electrification plan, yeah. and and they want to combine uh, this electrification with sustainability. Um, yeah. um, and and, well, and basically, we, they all need batteries, so absolutely. you're in a very good position. <laughs> yeah, I, they, yeah. they all they all need batteries and 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 and, and solutions and and. Yeah. Skilled engineering is a scarcity in this, uh, and, yeah. and and it's going to be over uh, over a long period of time. So the ability to attract is going to be a key uh, enabler for for how grow uh, how fast you can yeah. grow. Peter, thank you so much. I mean, because I, I've been desperate. I, I hope that at some point in the next, let's say, year, we'll be able to come up to Sweden and, and come and see around Absolutely. the factory you know, when the factory is in operation. I mean, it would be so exciting to come and see what you're doing. It is amazing. I want to congratulate you i think on the behalf of our viewers as well i mean i think people will be blown away by what you're what you're doing and the journey you're on is so it's so important as well i mean really yeah. really important i can so i can tell you so we have a we have a challenging year uh, ahead it's uh, yeah. Uh, building batteries is not easy. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, it, it is not. I mean, it's uh, it's a yeah. really, really uh, complex ma manufacturing setup. But it's also yeah. that's the fun challenge of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, because that's I mean that's the thing because we it's been so good of you to give us this time. I really appreciate it. But they're, they're, I mean, I guess the last thing is the kind of you know the the, the crystal ball vision of the future. But it does seem like you know, I think when I first heard that that battery technology is essentially, the energy density is increasing at roughly 6% a year. Yeah. And you kind of go, well, that doesn't sound like much. Mm -hmm. You know, 6% isn't very much. But then you have 10 years, yeah. <laughs> and that's what I've experienced is car batteries over 10 years, that's 60%. Yeah. You know, if that is the, roughly the case. And I mean, I don't know how long that can, obviously you're gonna reach a point where with the technology we have at the moment, is you can't, you cannot cram more electrons in that space, no, but it, it does it, feel like it's. It is, but, but, we are uh, heading in that direction. Uh, where it uh, is absolutely. Getting... On the other hand, 
you know, uh, the, the, the theoretical uh, uh, energy densities that you could, could achieve is, is, is still, you know, hugely uh, unexplored. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, so, 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 so there is uh, a lot of, of uh, leeway to, to, to go in order to what we could, uh, in theory, uh, do. But then comes the, you know, uh, comes a number of different uh, challenges to get that system to work and to get it to operate in, in a, you know, in a natural temperature. For example, you know, solid state um, uh, yeah. is 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 kind of challenged that it, it's really, um, you know, operating in, in a warmer type of, of, uh, of, a, of an environment. There is a lot of work to, uh, to reduce the, uh, the cycle, but, but good luck starting a, a solid state battery in Northern Sweden during winter time. It's, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yes. uh, uh, today, yeah, but, but we will, you know, we will Who take, knows? um, yeah. We will take take uh, um, step step forward, but but the future is, I think, I- incredibly exciting, and and I think, yeah. you know, with cost performance and 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 also safety, because it's also getting people comfortable with with the safety. Yeah. You know, batteries is still significantly more safe than, than driving around with with petrol uh, in in a, a tank, tank next liquid. to you. Explosive but, liquid, yeah. But it's yeah. still uh, it's still a new technology, and we just need to yeah. get uh, uh, get comfortable. We need to get data around it. But but the, I mean the future is incredibly bright, and and it's yeah. really really solving uh, a big uh, problem of our time, which is the carbon footprint. Get our great EV giveaway. Subscribe and enter for the chance to win one of several electrifying prizes, including one of four electric cars.